Buenos Nachos Amigos, and welcome to Record Breakers, a music podcast of good times and good fortune. I'm Petey Rave, and as of the time you're listening or watching this, probably, I'm going to go see Red Velvet tomorrow. Peekaboo. Peekaboo. Um, oh, wait. Here with me is my team, my squad, my crew. We've got David. Being on this podcast makes me ashamed I can't grow facial hair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We've got Drew. So I just realized as we were starting this podcast, the can of Coke I opened, the tab is such that every time I take a drink, if you're watching the YouTube uh, version of this, you're going to see the Coke logo and I look like I'm in an ad. Yes. The choice of a new generation. Oh wait, that's Pepsi. Uh and of course, here with still with us for this round of episodes, Mike, aka Serial Sensei. How you doing, Mike? If you can see my hat, YouTube viewers, United States of Smash. Yes, yes. Uh we're here to talk about music. We're here to talk about an album. And the provider of the album this week is Drew. Drew, what have you for us this week? So I decided to go um, into something that I have always really liked these guys. I think their stuff is really, really well done. And as I was coming through and trying to think of something, I discovered we haven't done an album by them yet. And I think that's a shame. Um, It's the French electronic music duo known as Daft Punk. The album is their uh, first full-length studio album under Virgin Music, and that would be Homework. Homework. We're doing our homework. Uh, Deej, what were your expectations coming into this album? My expectations were something that I wanted to ask Drew. And (laughs) my question is this, Drew. Out of all of Daft Punk's discography, why in particular did you pick this album? I'm curious. Um, well, um, we'll get to it a little bit in, uh, the songs, but homework was the first Daft Punk album I bought. It was their first and around the world was the first Daft Punk song that I heard. Mm-hmm. So it's well, the one that like, sticks out in my head. My expectation was remembering 1998 because yeah. I remember hearing a lot of this album and various tracks from it on MTV, pretty much being inescapable around this time, around 1998 or so. So, 1998. Yes. Uh, Mike, what were your expectations coming into this album? Um, I was pretty simple. I was expecting to put this on and have a good time. Um. Admittedly, I actually haven't listened to a lot of Daft Punk albums like as a whole, but I've heard just a lot of their songs. So I was just expecting, I'm going to throw this on, I'm going to let it rock out, and I'm going to have a good time. Yeah. Because so everything else has led me to believe that that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, I was expected to, ha- to have uh, a nice time with some, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> and yeah, bop your head and maybe... Uh, I'm not, not, I don't, was, I don't do drugs. Was there so. some, was there some, um, some shaking of the posterior regions, Pete Wright? Probably a little bit. <laughs> shaking the shoulders a little bit. Uh, uh Drew. What, were, was there a groove that you possibly may have been placed in? Was there yes. a groove? Yes, a slight groove. <laughs> uh, Drew, how Here. would you describe this album musically? Well, the great thing about Daft Punk in general is just no matter what they're dabbling in, because as you may have heard recently, they've moved a little bit out of their normal house genre with their last uh, two albums, the Tron soundtrack that they did, and then also uh, Random Access Memories. But whatever they're doing, the composition and the music itself has just been always like stellar, like always just top notch. Um, they got noticed very quickly after uh, Defunk, which was uh, the first like single that they put out, um, sort of got a lot of play around like the French house scene. Um, 
and they got picked up by Virgin. And the idea was going to be they were going to make a bunch of like techno, like club singles and tracks and like do that for like the rave kids in the house scene and stuff like that. And then later on make a full uh, record. About three months in, they had a bunch of songs and they were like, what? Like, we could just do the whole album now. Like, we don't even need to wait. Like, why don't we just figure out, we'll add some other songs into it. We'll figure out the playlist and how it flows. And we'll just go from there. And that, to me, is kind of cool. Because you can sort of hear in spots where they've added stuff to link the tracks together. And you can hear where, like, the singles sort of happen. Um, and I think that's really, really neat from that angle. Um also, the great thing about Daft Punk is, at least to me, is it's a whole sort of milieu. It's a whole thing where you have the two French dudes who are robots making this very like repetitive like house music, but they're always playing on something. Um, they very famously don't do many like actual DJ sets. They do mostly just the music. They just want to make cool music and figure that part out. So their creativity is sort of uh, paramount to them, which I think for this type of music, you don't honestly get a lot of. And I think that's why they're sort of big is because dance music is fun, but a lot of it is repetitive and boring. And Daft Punk always brings something very infectious and very inventive to it. And homework sort of hit in a very, very cool way, like Peach said, in like that late uh, 90s sort of dance house sort of music boom that happened uh at that point Mm -hmm. uh david how would you describe this album musically i would describe this album musically as a collection of tracks normally when the phrase album (sighs) comes up you expect a music artist to have a general consistent sound and theme. I'm not sure you really get that with this uh, release from Daft Punk, but I don't really see that as a detriment in this case, and in the case with a lot of music of this genre, that isn't necessarily a detriment. Uh, the collection of songs is pretty consistently good for the most part. Uh, to call it an album, sure, you can for the sake of record company releases and contractual obligations. Sure, you can definitely call it that. But it is Daft Punk making a bunch of songs and releasing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike, how would you describe this album musically? What would this seem on that's like higher attention? I feel like this is this is like if if house music and like electronic music and like little smidgens of like techno and hip hop like all gathered under like one room and everybody just had like a jam session and (laughs) as repetitive as some of the instrumentals can be I think they just do a good job of the grooves are so good that you almost I don't mind that it's repetitive because you get so lost in some of the grooves that it's like I kind of don't want this to change up let me keep hearing this same (laughs) pattern over and over because I'm just kind of stuck in it um, around the world, around the yeah. world, around the world, around <laughs> I, I the world. I actually, actually, you, for some reason, that triggered something in my brain. It, it kind of is a lot of the songs on here are kind of like that idea where you get like a bunch of musicians together and it's like a bunch of jazz musicians and they just lay down the beat for like a good two minutes. They just lay down a groove and then all of a sudden somebody's just like, ah, no, I'm just going to solo over this now. And it sort of happened there, but just with electronic pieces these two are putting together. Right. Yeah. But go on. Yeah, yeah, there's, it's repetitive, but there's still a lot going on. Like you get a lot of, I noticed I feel like towards the second half of the album, the synths started to get a little more like heavier, a little little more nastier. So even within the repetitiveness, they still find ways to like, keep it fresh so that you're never really getting bored. Like even in the songs that I didn't like as much, I still appreciated like what they were trying to do. Well, I didn't say what they were trying to do pretty much what they did do. Um, 
So yeah, musically it's it's a good time. <laughs> musically, it really is just a good time. Uh, yeah, yeah, it it it, it works really well. I mean, you could like it, that that repetitiveness allows you to kind of almost feel like you're watching them layer the song in real time <laughs> sometimes, which is really cool. Uh, and and yeah, it, it's a, it's a fun groove. It's a fun time. Like the the you, you kind of get lost in it, and that's this style of music. That's uh, it, that's a good thing. You just kind of want to just you know passively have a good time while it's just kind of grooving around in your ears and grooving around in your head. Uh, you know, while it, while it repeats itself, like uh, it gets, takes me back to the days of like listening to. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and then once again, shout out Frisky Radio, uh, listening to some of those, like, uh, though it's a different genre, like drum and bass and like, so, I guess I think they did some house m- music as well, but like these like two hour mixes where you just kind of like, it just blends together and it's just kind of like washes over you. But this, in this one, it's a collection of songs more than that. Uh, and there's a little bit more of like a cut in between the songs, but yeah, it just kind of like lets you lets it wash over you uh but let's talk about some of those songs uh drew what what will be some of the key tracks to zero in on for you well i'm gonna cheat a little bit on this um around the world direct, yes around the world um it's gonna come up it's gonna come up but the first three tracks um i wanted to highlight as sort of one unit um because i feel they fit together really well and it's a uh, deft and direct uh WDPK, uh, which is like a one minute little snippet, and then Revolution 909. Um, and it sort of bridges the gap um, of who Daft Punk is. Uh, Daft and Direct is very much was set up um, during research on the album, was very much set up, and you can sort of feel it as an introduction to what Daft Punk did on the DJ scene as this duo, right? Um, and WDPK, it mixes in with that with like, okay, this is what we did on the like house DJ French rave scene going into WDPK, which is like, we're going to transition and try to do this on radio, um, where revolution 909 sort of hits you in that way of the beginning of it. And the rest of the track sort of leads into this thing that was happening in the late nineties in Europe and especially France in the club scene with the government really cracking down on raves and claiming it was about, um, drugs and this and that and the other thing, but really cracking down on the music and the people there within that scene, which was really kind of cool to see something instrumental. Um, I always like it when instrumental music can evoke a feeling, um, Around the world, like I said, we'll get to it. Because like I said, it's the first Daft Punk song I heard. Um, yes, it's repetitive to a fault at times um, in pieces of it. But it's a long enough song where it like dabbles in other things as well. Um, the dance hook, the synth, it's just all really cool as hell. Like it drips this style that Daft Punk has always had. And then Alive. Um, Alive I really like because there's a darkness to it. Like to me, Daft Punk is especially Daft Punk from homework and like discovery is a very bright sort of band uh, a lot of times and alive sort of has this like darker feel to it, which I think is really, really cool and really, really nice to see them dabble into sometimes. Uh, David, what would be some of the key tracks for you? I'll start with rock and roll because this song to me, when I listened to it a couple of times through, uh, it felt like a really good standard track for like minimalist house music, like very pure prime UK, French, Germany, UK house music. Like if Sprockets, uh, the SNL sketch, were an actual TV show, this would be the kind of song that probably would have been played on sprockets in germany if it were a real tv show in the time of uh, uh, sprockets where we dance exactly uh burning uh, the 13th track on the album credit to this album it it is pretty consistently good all the way through uh it is the 13th track on the album i loved it burning and the aforementioned alive uh this one was 
a little bit different from the rest of the album, which had more of a mid to late 90s feel in my mind, whereas Alive felt very <laughs> early 90s. Uh, almost in that kind of way where you hear some older influence of some older techno and some older trance, where it had that sort of darker, intenser feel, intense feel to it, but it, it really, really worked. Also, the one that I will say that is kind of your mileage may vary. You might like it, you, you might not. Rolling and scratching. Uh, it's exactly what it says, and your mileage might vary. You might dig it, you might not, because there's a lot of scratching, there's a lot of rolling. So depending on how you feel about that, rolling and scratching. Your mileage may vary. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike, what would be some of the key tracks for you? Um, Revolution 909 is like an immediate standout for me. I feel like that's like quintessential Daft Punk. Like if there was somebody who had never heard of them before, that would be one of the first songs I would think to play for them. It's just, it's super catchy. (laughs) And it's just, it's crazy how, I don't want to say like the instrumentals are simple, but like I said, they're repetitive, but they're so infectious. Like it's kind of just a nice drum clap pattern but you get this really funky bass this is a song that if you can dance you'll dance to it if you can't dance you'll imagine yourself dancing at least (laughs) so that that one was a standout um i thought teachers was an interesting one even though i wrote it down but it actually wasn't a favorite but i liked it because it was an homage to everyone who they were influenced by so I thought that was just kind of awesome that they literally just went down this long list of of people who, you know, obviously influenced them while they were coming up. So I, I guess cool in a way that if you're a fan of the genre, they just gave you like 30 people to go look up. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that I thought that was pretty cool. And I um, also love Endo Silver Club because that was another track that was just really fun to listen to. Um, I like that the synth was a bit heavier. It had like this grungy kind of bounce to it. I thought that was one of the songs that showcased, um, like I said, even with how repetitive some of the tracks can be, they're still diverse in a way that they can take the same elements and kind of still switch things up. Yeah. Uh, what's funny is for some reason, the first thing that popped in my head when you, how you were describing teachers was uh, Korean rapper Black Nut. Uh, has a song called 100, which is ostensibly a diss track that it really isn't a diss track. Uh, uh, but basically, uh, part of it is that he just uh, says, he starts with the line, Black Nut versus, and then lists 100 prominent Korean rappers <laughs> <laughs> in, on beat and in rhythm. Uh, so if you if you're ever wanted to get into Korean hip-hop, Go check out Black Nut 100, and you'll get a, a, a list of exactly 100 names, including him f- finishing up with the members of his label at the time. <laughs> like, it's like, <laughs> so go check that out. Uh, for some reason, that's what popped into my head when when, when you were talking about teachers. Uh, also, uh, <clears throat> the song I want to say Phoenix, mainly because the the drum at the beginning. I guess it's because they're using the same, I guess, uh, probably an 808, I assume, the same bass, the same kick drum. It uh, it made me think of, for, again, I don't know why, but for some reason, uh, two live crews, we want some pussy. Because it kind of <laughs> starts the same way. That doom, 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 doom. Everybody say, hey, we want some pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Go ch- listen to Phoenix by Daft Punk, and Ow. we want some pussy by Two Live Crew. Heard that forever. Yes. <laughs> I did that on purpose. I was probably by design. I'm yes. sure. I'm sure the the thing that two French dudes <laughs> want you also associating with that, their music, Two Live Crew. Yeah. I bet they did. I wouldn't be surprised. Fuck, I'm, we might bring they're, in. Uh, they're uh, weird uh, dudes. I'm, you're right. Yeah, uh, we'll, we might bring in. We might bring in. Speaking of Korean uh, artists, we might bring in Sai's last album, where he has this, a song called "New Face," which has a tribute to that song, which you probably won't be able to get him to admit to your face that it's a tribute to that song, but it's totally a tribute to that song. <laughs> Edie, I want you to bring in some really, really, really dirty Korean hip hop. 
we'll, that's what I would we'll, like. We'll, we'll, we'll have to find it. It'll be tough because you'll have to learn. You'll have to learn Korean cuss words like shibal uh, or iseki, uh, things like that. Uh, gesori, I think. I think that's how you say it. That's another one. Uh, you'll you'll have to look those up. Uh, that being said, uh, let's go back around the horn. Let's yeah, reverse course. Uh, talk about some conclusive thoughts. Uh, da- uh, uh, David, what would be some con- what would be your conclusion on this album as a whole? I want to thank Daft Punk for making this album because it helped me get through an activity I really, really don't like doing: folding laundry. <laughs> uh, I gave this album uh, one of a couple of listens while folding laundry. And it helped me get through it. And, and that was really, really enjoyable. Uh, there is a ton of creativity on this album. And that is a testament to what has made Daft Punk as successful for as long as they have been. Uh, they are able to take these tracks and then put layers on top of layers on top of layers on top of layers. And you might hear the the main beat underneath all of it but they they're able to take things and go all sorts of different places and that's that's really cool uh, the singles are the singles they are ubiquitous they're straight out of 1998 if you're of a certain age they're probably somewhere in the back of your mind from watching trl or something back around in the day the world around the world around the world <laughs> however comma as I said at the beginning, is this an album? Not really. For good or for bad, you can take all of the tracks on this al- on this collection and put them in a DJ set, and they'll all work. But do they necessarily flow together? Not really. But in the case of Daft Punk, that isn't really necessary. This is a good collection of songs. Mm-hmm. It's a good collection of songs, which I guess means it's a good album. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mike. Oh, by the way, guys, guys, I don't ever want to hear a single word about prog tracks being too long again after this album. <laughs> this album had a lot of long tracks. I don't want to hear a word about it ever again. There was a lot it of like ever. six and seven minute guys. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I don't, the, the funny thing is I, I don't think... I don't think this is the crowd to even really complain about that, but I hear, I hear your point. <laughs> For all the guests that come on that have to listen to it. <laughs> we here. certainly are going to bitch about it. <laughs> we, we can dig on some, like, we, we're the group that, that gladly listened to the entirety of 2112. <laughs> uh, and, and loved it. Uh, Mike. He's agony and ecstasy in eight parts by man. Yes. <laughs> um Mike, what would be your conclusive thoughts on this album? Um it's just a fun time. Um I also listened to this album while doing an activity. I was playing Tech Mobile. And while I didn't win, um, because somehow the Minnesota Vikings defense is unstoppable, um, it made me forget that I was losing so bad. So that was <laughs> that was a good thing. Um but no, this album is it's fun, it's creative, it's it's like I said, it's very catchy. It's very infectious. And one more last note that I thought of, like the last time I listened to it, this came, this album came out in what? 97, 98. Yes, 97. To me, may, maybe it's just me. I didn't think this sounded dated. Like it still sounds clean. It still sounds, I mean, obviously you can tell like it maybe came from a certain time period, but it's still, I didn't listen to this and be like, oh, this sounds like old. Like the way it was obviously mixed and recorded, it it sounds very top quality. So yeah. I think that proves that their music <laughs> stands the test of time. Because yeah, this still, still it, yeah, this still sounds really clean. It, it holds up in a way that uh, you still, you, it still takes you back to a time, uh, but mainly just from remembering fr- it fr- and having it associated with a certain time but definitely not because it's like oh this is this is of its time no this is this holds up not in candle even- box no <laughs> uh and which is which is an accomplishment especially considering this is a more of a time when 
uh, being a DJ or being a techno producer was more laborious, more of a tedious than, than it is now. Uh, which is, which is, which is really cool. Uh, but yeah, this, this album does stand the test of time and it is, uh, is a fun record. It's a good groove. Uh, it'll kind of put, put you in a kind of like a, uh, a, a good headspace to just kind of bop your head and, you know, shake your shoulders, move your butt a little bit. Uh, get some tasks done that you don't want to get done. Exactly. Um, and, and it works and it is a fantastic collection of songs and a fantastic, like, offering a fantastic collection of music uh drew finally last but not least what will be your conclusion on this album as a whole like uh dave pointed out this is you can very much hear the seams on this album this is not an album that all of the time flows perfectly together um it is something that like i said it started out as singles um because that's sort of was Daft Punk's milieu at the time was like they were house DJs so it was like okay we're making a song and then the song just changes like we don't have to think about like oh this is all going on an album we're just trying to keep the party going so like let's make the songs to keep the party going um they didn't I think really start thinking about that until four years later when they started making Discovery um and then four years after that with Human After All and stuff like that where they were actually thinking like wait, okay, these are going to be listened to from front to back. Like, how can we make that happen better? Um, whereas this is, in some respects, just a collection of songs. But um, being the first one, I sort of have a soft spot for like, okay, Daft Punk's huge now. Like, <laughs> Grammys and number ones and doing uh, soundtracks to movies – they're huge. They're forced to be reckoned with. Um, like you see those helmets and most people know what's going on. Um, if they well, follow music at all. Those helmets. Right. Seen it. Like it's crazy. Um, also I would love one of those helmets, but they're like $400. They're like a replica belt expensive, like not, um, they're way cooler cause they have like LEDs and shit, but like for real. Um, and, and, and if you showed it to, to a show, you don't have to defend them like a, like a, a replica belt. <laughs> it's true um but at the same time um seeing the first of uh artists like that i think is a really interesting exercise and this being their first i if any of these songs like got transplanted into a new daft punk record um i think mike said it like it doesn't sound out of date necessarily it just sounds like the product that it is it was oh wait we could we could actually kind of fit these together and we have enough. Now we can make like three more songs and just have a full album since we haven't released any of these. Let's just do that then. And then they just did it. Um, and that's sort of been Daft Punk's mantra. I think is like, ah, I guess we can do that. Like, sure. We can, we can have brilliant funk guitarists and may we ridiculous may singers we? on an al- album we? for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's it's not dated it's just iconic Fair. uh which is really which is really cool um uh, all right La- those are our thoughts now let's get into the main event of the evening we get to our haiku reviews let's light up the torches and rally the troops into our haiku frenzy um, let's get started. Deej, David, what what is your haiku? If you like house tracks and a few funky breakdowns, can't go wrong with it. Mike, what is your haiku? Everybody dance. Lose control of your body. Synths are eternal. Yes. Um... Lose control of all of your body, except for your bowels. Keep control of your bowels. Um, iconic duo. There's my haiku. Iconic duo. Lay down some funky da- dance beats to bop your head to. Uh, and of course, last but not least, Drew. Drew, what is your haiku? 
a couple French guys, outstanding composition, makes you want to dance. Want to dance with somebody? Want to feel the heat with somebody? Want to dance with somebody? With somebody who loves me. Yeah. All right. Um. So that's all. Those are our thoughts on Daft Punk's homework. Uh. Go check it out. You can. You can of course find it on our Spotify playlist. Play Record Breakers, the home game. Do your due diligence and your due due diligence. Uh. Follow along at home. Of course, on that Spotify playlist will be, of course, as well next week's record, and that will be provided finally for his turn uh, and for his uh, last episode for now uh, next week. Uh, Mike, Mike, what do you have for us next week? Uh, next week, you guys will get to listen to uh, an album from an underground rapper from New York named Tone Deaf, and the album is entitled Polymer, and it's yes. a very very interesting listen. Very, very interesting listen to the say the least. So I look forward to that discussion. But that, of course, is next week for y'all. Uh, but that is next week, and this is this week. Uh, and you can, of course, find us all over the internet. Uh, David is at Call Me DJM. Drew is at X for X. Mike is at Serial Sensei. So Serial Sensei. Sensei, I don't know. <laughs> Serial Sensei. And that's Serial, the, the, the type you eat in the morning. Uh, I'm a PD Rave. Uh, the show is at four record breakers. That's number four record breakers. Recordbreakerspodcast.com. Uh, recordbreakerspodcast at gmail.com is the email. If you want to email us feedback, let us know. Like, share, subscribe. Rebelli TV on YouTube. Like, share, subscribe. Give us feedback. Let us know what you think of the album. Give it out. You- give us a review. Apple Podcasts. Give us the five stars. Don't be a hater. Ding the bell. Out. Slap Help the subscribe out. button. Do all the things. Until the th- <laughs> you know what to do. Until next time, I'll still this way. Yeah. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>